In the early years of the Cold War, Britain faced a brutal strategic reality. Nuclear weapons had changed warfare permanently. Deterrence depended on aircraft that could strike fast and far. Engineers were forced to rethink what a bomber could be. One aircraft would become the backbone of Britain's nuclear force. Its shape looked nothing like the bombers before it. Large delta wings dominated the design. Speed, altitude, and survivability became the priority. This aircraft was built to penetrate enemy defenses, not outgun them. It became a symbol of British Cold War air power. The Avro Vulcan was developed as part of Britain's V-bomber program. This program aimed to deliver nuclear weapons deep into enemy territory. Britain needed an independent nuclear deterrent. Jet propulsion and new aerodynamic concepts made this possible. Avro proposed a radical delta-wing bomber design. The concept promised high altitude and long range. Development began in the late 1940s under extreme secrecy. Engineers faced unfamiliar aerodynamic challenges. Delta wings offered advantages but were poorly understood at the time. Extensive wind tunnel testing was required. Structural integrity became a major concern. Every design choice focused on survivability. The Vulcan was powered by four turbojet engines buried in the wings. This reduced drag and improved performance. Engine integration was complex and risky. Cooling and maintenance posed serious challenges. Engineers refined intake and exhaust designs repeatedly. The result was a clean and efficient airframe. Avionics were advanced for the era. Navigation systems supported long-range missions. Bombing accuracy depended on complex radar equipment. Crew workload was carefully studied. Redundancy was built into critical systems. Reliability was essential for nuclear deterrence missions. The first Vulcan flew in 1952. Flight testing revealed impressive performance. Handling characteristics were generally stable. Pilots praised its responsiveness at altitude. Some early issues required structural reinforcement. Overall, the aircraft exceeded expectations. By the mid-1950s, the Vulcan entered Royal Air Force service. It became a central element of Britain's nuclear strategy. Crews trained continuously for high alert readiness. The bomber force maintained constant preparedness. Deterrence depended on credibility. The Vulcan provided that credibility. The Vulcan's delta wing defined its identity. It allowed high-speed flight at altitude. Lift characteristics supported long-endurance missions. Structural strength supported heavy payloads. The design also improved fuel efficiency. Few bombers looked anything like it. The aircraft carried nuclear weapons internally. Early missions relied on freefall nuclear bombs. Later modifications allowed conventional weapons. Payload flexibility became increasingly important. Internal carriage reduced radar signature. Survivability was enhanced as a result. Crew stations were arranged for efficiency. Pilots, navigators, and systems operators worked closely together. Long missions demanded ergonomic design. Pressurization allowed high-altitude flight without pressure suits. Emergency systems were carefully integrated. Crew survival was a constant design concern. Speed and altitude defined Vulcan tactics. Early doctrine relied on high-altitude penetration. Soviet air defenses forced tactical evolution. Low-level flight later replaced high-altitude bombing. Structural reinforcement allowed this shift. The aircraft adapted to changing threats. Maintenance was demanding but manageable. Jet engines required careful monitoring. Wing structure inspections were routine. Ground crews became highly specialized. Operational availability remained strong. Reliability supported continuous deterrence patrols. The Vulcan proved highly maneuverable for its size. Display flights demonstrated steep climbs and tight turns. Pilots respected its capabilities. 
These characteristics were unusual for a bomber. Handling contributed to operational flexibility. The aircraft defied expectations. The Vulcan stood nuclear alert throughout the Cold War. Aircraft were kept ready for immediate launch. Crews trained for rapid response. Missions were planned down to the minute. Deterrence required constant readiness. The aircraft symbolized Britain's resolve. As air defenses improved, tactics evolved. High-altitude penetration became increasingly dangerous. The Vulcan transitioned to low-level strike missions. Flying close to the ground reduced radar detection. This required intensive pilot training. Structural upgrades supported the new role. The aircraft participated in numerous large-scale exercises. These tested coordination with NATO forces. Navigation accuracy was continuously refined. Crews practiced under simulated combat conditions. Every mission aimed to replicate real war scenarios. Readiness remained the priority. The Vulcan's most famous combat use occurred during the Falklands War. Long-range bombing missions were conducted from Ascension Island. These missions pushed the aircraft to its limits. Extensive aerial refueling was required. The operations demonstrated remarkable range. Strategic impact exceeded physical damage. Conventional bombing roles expanded during later service. The Vulcan carried traditional munitions. Precision improved through training and upgrades. The aircraft remained relevant despite age. Flexibility kept it operational. Few bombers adapted so effectively. Operational stress eventually took its toll. Airframes aged under demanding flight profiles. Maintenance became increasingly complex. Replacement aircraft were already in development. Strategic priorities shifted again. The Vulcan's era slowly came to an end. The Vulcan represented a leap in bomber design. Delta wings were rare on heavy aircraft. Engineers proved the concept viable. Aerodynamic knowledge expanded significantly. Later aircraft benefited from these lessons. The Vulcan influenced future designs. Jet bomber doctrine evolved around its capabilities. Speed and penetration replaced defensive armament. Strategic bombing philosophy changed. Survivability depended on performance, not firepower. This concept became standard. The Vulcan helped define it. Avionics integration was ahead of its time. Navigation systems supported complex routes. Bombing accuracy relied on advanced radar. System redundancy improved reliability. These technologies influenced later aircraft. The Vulcan pushed systems integration forward. Low-level strike capability marked a major shift. Structural reinforcement enabled sustained terrain-following flight. Crew training evolved accordingly. Mission planning became more complex. Survivability increased significantly. Adaptation ensured continued relevance. The aircraft also served as a test platform. Systems and procedures were refined during service. Operational feedback shaped upgrades. Engineers learned from real-world conditions. Continuous improvement defined the program. Few aircraft benefited from such iterative development. Public perception of the Vulcan grew over time. Airshows showcased its agility. The aircraft became an icon. Its sound and silhouette were unmistakable. National pride surrounded it. The Vulcan entered popular culture. The Avro Vulcan served as the backbone of Britain's nuclear deterrent. Its role was central to Cold War strategic stability. The aircraft maintained constant readiness for decades. Deterrence depended on the certainty of response. The Vulcan provided that certainty. Its missions were never meant to be flown in war. Success was measured by silence. As strategic priorities shifted, the Vulcan adapted. Nuclear missions gave way to conventional strike roles. Low-level penetration replaced high-altitude bombing. This transition extended its operational relevance. 
Few strategic bombers adapted so effectively. Flexibility became its defining trait. The aircraft remained credible despite rapid technological change. The Falklands War highlighted the Vulcan's endurance. Long-range bombing missions were flown from distant bases. Extensive aerial refueling made these missions possible. The operations demonstrated planning and logistical mastery. Physical damage was limited but symbolic impact was significant. The missions proved Britain's global reach. The Vulcan delivered strategic messaging. Eventually, aging airframes limited further service. Maintenance demands increased with time. New aircraft offered improved efficiency and survivability. Strategic doctrine continued to evolve. The Vulcan was gradually withdrawn from service. Its retirement marked the end of an era. A new generation replaced it. Public memory of the Vulcan remains strong. Airshow displays showcased its agility and power. The aircraft's sound and shape became iconic. Museums preserve surviving examples today. Aviation enthusiasts study its design closely. Pilots remember its demanding flight characteristics. The Vulcan earned lasting respect. Historically, the Vulcan represents Cold War logic. Speed, altitude, and deterrence defined its mission. Defensive gun turrets became obsolete. Strategic bombing philosophy transformed permanently. The aircraft embodied this transition. It reflected technological confidence and political tension. Few aircraft captured their era so clearly. The Avro Vulcan was more than a bomber. It was a strategic instrument of national policy. Its existence helped prevent conflict rather than fight it. Engineering excellence supported political stability. The aircraft shaped doctrine, design, and deterrence. Its influence remains visible in modern air power. The Vulcan's legacy is secure.